Hey everyone, it's Robert from On My Turn Table. Hope you have a great day today. It is Sunday. It's also a coffee kind of day. Oh, got to warm that sucker up. It's getting cold. Um, I'm going to wrap up my look at Thin Lizzy. It's been a wonderful journey. Um, not that I'm not going to continue to listen to them because I will. But uh, as, of, as far as any videos for now, uh, I'm going to put them aside. But it's been an amazing journey. I love every moment of it. Uh, but I'm going to do a a very difficult top 10 song list. It wasn't an easy task. Uh, so many great tracks to choose from, as well as every album they put out was fantastic. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know how to choose or how I chose what I did. But uh, the band was so good and underrated. They could keep pace up. Uh, they could keep up with any band out there at the time um, and keep pace with them as well, but they never really got their due. Uh, Phil Lynott was um, gone way too early. But what they left us is uh, a discography that I will enjoy for a long, long time, and I know you, a lot of you guys out there uh, and will enjoy it as well. Um, two albums I didn't choose from. I don't know why, because I love both albums. I didn't choose anything from Vagabonds of the Western World. Don't ask me why. Perhaps if I was doing this again uh, and it was a top 15 list and more to choose from, I would, but uh, I didn't choose anything from that one. I also didn't choose anything from this wonderful album, Fighting. And why I didn't, I don't know. Because <laughs> this is a remarkable album. Maybe one of their best. Um... Maybe. I'm not sure. I also didn't choose from the two albums that I do not have, so I didn't think that was fair to choose anything from an album that you don't own. Uh, so 1971's debut, uh, Thin Lizzy. And I also didn't choose anything from 1974's Nightlife. Uh, I don't own either album um, yet, but uh, hopefully I will one day. Uh, but... Um, so it's kind of hard to choose something that you don't have. But Thin Lizzy has definitely become one of my top five bands ever. And are closer to number one than they are to number five. So I don't know where exactly, but uh, so, so good. So good. So anyway, uh, here we go with my top ten tracks today. Sorry. That could change uh, over time. Even a month from now, that could change. But, uh, because there's so much to choose from. But here we go from Bad Reputation at number 10, Opium Trail. Opium Trail is a dark and heavy opener. And uh, love the echoes and the vocals. Awesome riffs. And I tell you, the lyrics by Phil Lynott are so good on every track. Um, he's such a lyricist. He's really, really good. Uh, what a solo as well. Blistering solo by Scott Gorham. As uh, Brian uh, Robertson wasn't on this album all that much. He was on a couple of tracks, but he got into a big bar fight and um, hurt his hand. Kind of left the band after this. But uh, so Scott Gorham, excellent guitarist. Uh, took up the reins and, and uh, did super, super well on that one. Uh, from this beautiful album here, their second album, Shades of a Blue Orphanage. It's a wonderful album. Uh, I chose Brought Down at number nine. I love how it grows from this beautiful acoustic track into this harder edge track with some tasty guitar solos. And the harmonies are so good as well. Again, these guys don't have a bad track. The drumming is awesome as well on this one. This is a fine, fine album. Fine album, for sure. Um, from this wonderful box set, this one has Jailbreak and Johnny the Fox on it. So at number eight, from Johnny the Fox, I chose the song Massacre. It's a short track. It's only three minutes long, but they pack so much into the track. The riffs, the rhythm of the track as well. Kind of a march sound in the drums. Awesome solos. Uh, the drumming is the highlight of the track as well. As well as, as, well as Phil 
Lenat sounds so good in his vocals. But uh, fantastic, fantastic album. This is a great box set, by the way, too. Um, I'll refer this to this one back again in a couple of times. At number seven, the album Chinatown and the title track, Chinatown. Um, Ostring, Ostring. Wow, I can't speak. Awesome guitar blistering openings. Phil's got this, or had this, punctuation or accent accentuation in his vocals and he pronounced every word that he sang it was really cool how he did that i don't know how he did that but every note and every vowel every consonant that he sang he really pronounced it and i, I love that in his vocals great rhythm to the track as well i little, little, love the little laugh he gives before the solos so tasty uh shared lead between scott gorham and snowy white on this one great album great album going back to this box set and from jailbreak at number six warriors cool riff driven opener and then into this harder edge track um it's about drugs so phil lenott says the only way he could give any sense to heavy drug takers was to describe them as warriors and that they actually went out and did it meaning they went out and took the drugs. Uh, I love the solos and the lyrics, the twin guitars, again, of Scott Gorham and Brian Robertson, really shine on this track, and the whole album. Amazing stuff. Uh, at number five, from Black Rose, uh, this is the, the Irish version, Roizen Doob. I, I butchered it, I know I did. Uh, Black Rose, a rock legend. It's a four-part track, very traditional Irish history-driven track, but so good. Even the solo has an Irish sound to it, from the wonderful Gary Moore and Scott Gorham. It's the only album that's, uh, that uh, Gary Moore is on, the complete album. And he really brought an edge to the album, for sure. Um, the guitar solo speed up, just like you would see in an Irish track. And the, I know it had nothing to do with the, with the sound or the song, but I thought of uh, I thought of Titanic, and when Jack and what's her name <laughs> were dancing downstairs to the Irish jigs, and it sped up and sped up, and they were spinning around and spinning. Around. That's what the guitar solo did. It just sped right up, and it was great, great, beautiful song. What's her name? Rose. That's what it was. Rose. <laughs> what's her name? Uh, from. Renegade, another fine, fine album. At number four, I chose Angel of Death. Whew. First album to feature keyboardist Darren Wharton. And this is what we get in the opener of Angel of Death. Uh, this cool keyboard-driven track to start off with. Um, as well as the awesome driven riff lace track. Um, Scott Gorham provides an awesome, awesome solo. Um, the keyboards give this mysterious feel to the song. Um, it's also good on the live and dangerous album as well. The amazing live album. Um, top five, top ten live albums out there. Uh, the song itself was inspired by uh, Phil Lenat reading um, the prophecies of Nostradamus. And he came up with that Angel of Death track. Um, getting back to this box set again and from Jailbreak, the Cowboy Song. What's not to love about the Cowboy Song? Um, the lyrics tell of us wandering across the United States through various adventures and romances. The song begins with a mellow acoustic country music style introduction before uh, transition to an up temp hard rock. That's how it's, that's how it's described. But it just goes from this cool, mellow, beautiful lyric uh, sounding Phil the Knot vocals into this hard edge, uh, hard rock song. Um, Cowboy Song has been described to uh, many as Thin Lizzy's, one of Thin Lizzy's greatest songs. It's just got that catchy um, rhythm to it. Great twin harmonies between Scott Gorham and Brian Robertson. Uh, it's not their heaviest track, but there's just something about the track that draws you in. 
and it's one of my favorites for sure. Uh, at number two, the title track from their last and probably their heaviest album, Thunder and Lightning. Again, their last and heaviest album, the title track hits you in the face with metallic-like riffs and blistering solos. Guitarist John Sykes was brought in to replace Snowy White, and he just brings the album to a new level, as well as you got Scott Gorham um, along with the ride too. Um, and the amazing playing of Darren Wharton on keyboards. It gets, Just the whole thing gives it a refreshing sound to the album and refreshing sound to the track. It's just the same. It would be their last. It's just a shame for sure. But another fine, fine album. And at number one, I'm going back to Jailbreak again. And the song Emerald. Wow. Uh, the lyrics in the opening uh, of Emerald. Down from the glen came the marching men with their shields and their swords to fight the fight they believed to be right, overthrow the overlords. It's a song about uh, the Anglo-Norman invasion of Ireland in the 12th century. Sorry, another stupid pop-up. Uh, again, the song's about an Anglo-Norman invasion from Ireland in the 12th century. Um... Another amazing track featuring Scott Gorman on lead and Brian Robertson on lead. It's a driving track. Uh, Phil the Knot, I'd say, was an Irish traditionalist. And that helped him create some amazing lyrics. And there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. The heavy riffs in the middle of the track. And then this beautiful twin guitar play between Scott and Brian. Um, some of the best playing ever on a Thin Lizzy track. So, um, there you have it, guys. There's my top 10 Thin Lizzy song listing. Um, again, I apologize for the pop-ups. Uh, I don't know how to turn those things off. But I uh, hope you enjoyed. If you don't know Thin Lizzy, check them out. I don't know where to start. I don't know where you'd start. Maybe Jailbreak, uh, something like that, and then just go from there. But uh, an amazing band, one of my top five favorite bands ever and uh that's it have stuff for a great rest of the day love you all we'll talk to you again soon bye now uh -huh.